Oh, what a beautiful morning. Oh, what a beautiful day. I got this great big feeling. Everything's going my way. Ha. Okay. I'm ready to put two coats of primer on here. Now, I previously had put two coats of primer on here before I put the fix it all on here, right? Do you remember that? Do you remember why I did that? Because these were old steps. The top two steps are brand new, but the steps from here on down were existing and they had some visible signs of mold underneath the existing paint. And so I had scraped off the paint as best I could with some paint remover material and then I applied some primer I wanted to kill that any possible residues of mold so I went to the store and I got this Zenser mold killing primer do you remember that kills existing mold mildew and odor causing bacteria I wanted to be safe rather than sorry before I applied my fix it all on these steps so I used that and I put two coats on there and I ended up using that same mold killing primer before I put my roofing material uh, down on here I put two coats of primer on this just as a deterrent maybe there was no mold on it obviously because it was all existing or it was all brand new I put all brand new plywood down here from about this line about right in here on out Okay, to the existing uh, top plates of the wall here and the wall over there. Okay, and I and I did that, and I have a little bit of, of this mold killing primer left, probably from here down, about there down, not very much. And I was thinking, should I put that down? Well, I decided no. I went to the store, and I got this Kills Two Latex. This is interior exterior water based primer sealer stain blocker. I don't need anything to kill mold now and I'm, I'm only going to be able to do a few steps from he, from here down anyway so I'm going to save I'm going to save this hopefully it won't dry out probably what I'll end up doing is is lifting this lid off putting a piece of plastic down on top of the paint from here down to keep that paint moist and keep it from drying out because it won't it won't if I close this lid and leave it, you've got all this air from here down to there that, that could possibly dry up this paint because there's not very much paint left. So I can take some plastic, I can just take a little plastic bag, you know, from the grocery store, a plastic bag, something like this, and I can reach down there and put that right down against the paint. Yeah, that'll prolong the paint. I think that's what I'll end up doing before I store that. But I knew I was going to need more than that much anyways and here's the thing the kills this was uh, $17 a gallon $30 a gallon okay this is gonna work fine and this will also work for all kinds of other areas where I want to prime like before painting or if you got a water stain or something on the wall you can you can put this down there first it's a stain blocker multi-surface stain blocker and it's for drywall masonry galvanized and more interior exterior water based I like that it's low odor you go to the store on kills products now they have so many different ones you're like okay which one do I get I talked to the guy at the store a little bit decided on this one and so that's what I'm gonna end up using on these steps and I'm probably I'm probably gonna put two coats on here I'm not gonna just just uh, skimp and go one coat it, it's not going to take me that much longer to put a second coat on here anyways after putting the first one on okay right now it looks like I have primer on here already right so this is just fix it all fix all it comes dry you mix it up and I put that on there initially to smooth out these steps and to put an angle on here each one of these now slopes out before all these old stairs sloped in a little bit so when the water came down it would it, it would accumulate here it wouldn't even build up high enough to come out because then there was a crack here they didn't caulk it properly and then it, it leaked down underneath the stairs 
and the stair stringers and all underneath the stairs had all kinds of had had some dry rot up here towards the top I had to replace all this and then down the down the stringers had mold growing on it built up about an eighth of an inch thick had mushrooms growing down there I had to scrape it all off and with the with the putty knife and then uh, took wire brushes to it then wiped that down then sprayed that with a bleach I sprayed it with bleach all, the whole thing and then after that I took my mold killing primer that I got at the store and I painted that and I painted two coats of it with that mold killing primer could I have used kills for that I don't know or they, they have different they have different paint products that uh, kills mold and stuff at the store that's just what I did and I painted everything underneath two coats and so now I'm up to this point here and I put a I put a skin on here with that with that uh, uh, fix it all and actually I built it up quite a few different coats if you saw those videos you would see all the all the time and effort went into doing that but I thought hey this is where I want to live for the next 20 years or more and so I want these steps done right and then obviously before I put the finished paint down I want to put primer on here first okay so I'm gonna put two coats of primer on there then I'm gonna come back and that primer is not gonna take very long to dry and then I'm gonna take my caulking and I'm gonna install that extreme extreme stretch there you go that's what I'm gonna use seals joints up to three inches 600 percent total stretch white and is from DAP okay extreme stretch I'd never seen that before premium crack proof elastomeric sealant that's what I like anything with caulking at the store that says elastomeric you know that's gonna stretch pretty easily it adheres to virtually any substrate paintable in two hours easy water cleanup and low odor interior and exterior extreme stretch so I'm gonna use that and I ended up using using some of that underneath these columns uh, way up underneath on the inside corners because I, I redid all of that okay before I put the that uh, roofing material down on there and I use that extreme stretch under there I'm gonna end up putting another coat under there one more time even before I finish this floor I'm actually gonna coat this floor a couple more times with that white roofing material so I'm gonna take that extreme stretch where am I gonna caulk I'm gonna caulk right up against the stucco okay all the way down on both sides I'm also gonna caulk all of these in inside edges all of them even even though it looks like it's tight now where I put the fix it all I'm still gonna caulk that okay the fix it all will not stop the water I'm gonna I'm, I'm not gonna make any assumptions okay I'm gonna put the caulking there too and then where else am I gonna put the caulking you have any other thoughts where else I'm gonna do it yeah underneath the stairs see see that see that edge up there look at that one you see the big gap under there I'm probably gonna put two coats I'll put a coat of caulking there and then after it dries I put another coat of caulking there and I'm gonna do it on every single step okay I don't want moisture to go in there I don't want the water to run down this edge and then kind of go back and try to get in through that crack I don't want water splashing on here and and coming up and go going up inside that crack no way no how not on my watch not gonna do it I'm gonna take the time and effort to caulk that and I want to put two coats on there and I want it nice and snug as a bug in a rug okay so I'll end up putting two coats of caulking I'll, put, I'll do that today too because it's gonna it's gonna be warm now you see that the Sun's come out it's over 50 degrees now and I was kind of smart I wanted to make sure I waited a little bit until I got warmer out here I didn't want to do it it at 40 degrees or 38 degrees or anything like that I wanted to make sure it's warm enough out here 
and it's dry enough that the, the two coats of, uh, of primer aren't going to take that long to dry. By the time I, I start painting up here and go all the way down to the bottom, it's going to be dry up here. In fact, once I go to the bottom, this, this third step to the bottom will be dry enough by the time I paint those other two that I can that I can step up here and then I can start up here and work back down again. That's what I did before and I'm, I'm thinking that's going to, this kills two latex is probably going to dry about the same time as that mold killing primer, the zinser. Okay, so I'm going to use the kills this time, a little cheaper and it's going to work just as just as well if not as as good or better than the Zenser mold killing primer. I don't need to use a mold killing primer anymore, do I? So I'll say I'll save that with all my other paints. The mold killing primer I may end up needing to use, you know, a few brushes of it here and there somewhere underneath the house or who knows in the future, okay? So that's what I'm going to do and I'm sticking to it. All right, let's do it. Now see here, I've still got my my paint tray. My paint trays. I got two of them, two little plastic inserts here, and I have not washed this out once yet. I I've had stain in there, or the, the mold killing primer in there, a couple different times. I've even had my roofing material uh, substrate that I put on. I don't know if you call it substrate or not, but the the it's like mastic, but you can put it on with the paint roller. Put that in there, put more primer in there, and I'm just gonna pour my primer straight in here. It's all nice and dry. This is fine. And even after a few more, and this builds up more, I'll just I can take it and I can just rip it right out of there and keep using that same plastic tray if I want. Okay, now am I going to show you the whole thing? I don't think I'm going to show you the whole thing. I might show you, I might show you one or two steps, or something. But I've already shown you how how to paint these steps and what I'm going to do, and what's all involved and stuff. And and it's not that big of a deal. I'm just taking that. And I've got my my four inch mini roller here, and I'm gonna I'm gonna use that on there and my two inch throwaway paintbrush. Look at that. It's still it's still in pretty good shape. I've used this for this entire project, putting different things on, using it as a paintbrush, putting this roofing material on around the edges, um, putting it on underneath, underneath this floor when I, when I was treating everything and painting all of the existing uh, OSB plywood underneath there and the two by sixes and all that kind of stuff. You saw that. If you didn't see it, you can go to my channel and you can find that under playlists, dry rot, deck repairs. And I think I'm still going to use the same the same roller cover. It's a little stiff. I've washed it out. I've used it several times. And I'm going to try it out a little bit. If, worst case scenario, I've got another paint cover I can use if I need to. Okay? That's, that's it. And then here's my little... My little doohickey that I that I put on the paint bucket, and that kind of helps me pour it and stuff. But that way the paint doesn't doesn't run all the way all the way on the back side of this and stuff. Okay, and I, and I can use this edge to wipe off my paintbrush and stuff, and I'm good to go. All right, enough of that. Got to get to work. Well, that's all I got for this time, but I'll be back with more videos.